Full qualifier of the 2016 U.S. Olympic team, Chase Kalish and his coach, Bob Bowman. So, Chase, just start us off, maybe walk us through the race. Uh, tell, how, tell us how it went down from your perspective and what you've been feeling since. Um, I mean, the ultimate goal was uh, for me to get on the team, and I couldn't be more uh, excited that I accomplished that. Uh, when you break down the race, I, I swam it the way that I always do and uh, kind of worked my breaststroke. I knew I was going to be behind at the 200 and then just kind of tried to hang on the freestyle uh, the overall time was not very good, but as Bob could tell you, I was super high strung, and that's not usually how I operate. And uh, I'm glad to get this one out of the way. I think this would be a lot. This one, to me, was a lot more stressful than I could imagine Rio would be. It's, this is the one thing that I wanted to accomplish, and anything after that is going to be a bonus. So I'm glad I got this one out of the way, and I, I think uh, I've got a lot more in the tank uh, going forward to Rio. Go ahead and open up the questions, Karen. Um, um, I mean, the training really hasn't changed. One of the reasons why I, I went to Georgia and, and uh, the, one of the reasons Bob gave me two college options, uh, Florida and Georgia, was uh, because they do long course. And, and uh, I, think, I think Georgia really um, helped me progress to, for my long course training while I was there. I didn't really uh, take a hit um, in the long course side training for short course down at Georgia. We, we do short, long course every single morning workout and multiple afternoon main workouts long course. Um, I think it, it varies significantly different because they say it doesn't really matter until you get it done in the big pool, and, and that's always been something that has been in my head. And, and yeah, it was awesome. I broke the American record, but this is a million times more important to me. <laughs> oh, well, I, I could hear in the crowd. Like, I, I knew Jay was uh, – I knew I had to have a big lead on Jay because I, I know how he, how he swims and um, – and I, I really heard the crowd on the freestyle. Everyone was going. I, I kind of like looked over a little bit, and I saw Jay was just cranking along. And um, I, I looked up in, on the wall, and I, I saw a two by his name, and I was, I just couldn't believe it. It was that was one of the coolest things I've ever done, to do it with Jay, one of my best friends. So that was, that was very cool, and it was, it was a very meaningful night for me. Uh, Michael told me how proud he was of me, and um, and it, that meant a lot. Michael's like an older brother to me, and um, hearing those from those words from him was was the approval that I've been looking for. And <laughs> I mean, I've had it all along, but but his, his approval is something that I always look highly for, and and uh, that meant a lot seeing him after. Karen and then Wayne. Chase, has the shadow of Michael that you've been swimming under for all these years ever felt um, like really suffocating? And do you feel like now you've emerged from it and you can be your build your own legacy? Um, I never really felt like I was like I was Michael was like blocking me out from doing anything in my sport by him doing my races. It's I've. Honestly, I, I love doing Michael's races and swimming alongside of him, and, and I love training next to him every single day, and uh, I'm just happy I got the opportunity tonight to, um, to swim the 4 a.m. And, and do a good race, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't see it like that. I, I don't see that um, I have, I'm living in Michael's shadow. It's, Michael's the greatest of all time, and, and I, I know no matter what I do, it will never uh, top his accomplishments. So, um, I'm glad that I got on the Olympic team, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, some later in the week. I know he's going to do awesome. Uh, Bob, I want to ask you. I know there were several moments through the last uh, couple of years where Michael's been very hard on Chase. Yes. Um, I want to ask you and how. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got the you got the most you got most of it. Ch Chase, you can answer this too, but I want to hear how you think that's helped him, and perhaps you know helped him tonight. Well, I think it's really tested him a little bit, right? Like, when Michael gets on you, 
it's pretty s severe, right? And it's kind of like nonstop for a while. <laughs> When I do it, it's like a nuclear bomb got dropped on your head for about two and a half minutes. But after that, it's over. But Michael kind of keeps it going. So I think it really pushed him and really kind of got him out of his comfort zone. And all I'm saying is you didn't do a double breath tonight, so I was okay on my first nuclear bomb. Yeah. It, it, it took something to get his attention. Yeah. Yeah. Behind you. Yeah. Right there. Um, I mean, like I, I've said it before, and Michael said it, it's it's – He's like a brother to me, and um, we, he's going to push me like a brother, and he's going to challenge me, and, and that's what I need. And, and I don't necessarily think that it coming from anyone other than Bob or Michael, it's probably going to make me really mad. Yeah. Um, it just, made him really mad anyway. But it was yeah, but. Tolerable. Um, I know that they're doing it because they love and care about me, and um, they, they genuinely want to see the best out of me, and uh, who, who doesn't want to be told what to do and, and get tips from the greatest swimmer of all time and, and then from Bob, one of the greatest coaches of all time. And I'm, I'm so lucky to be in the position that I am. Childs? Yeah, Bob, I mean, when, when, we, when we talked a couple of weeks ago, you said that Chase would still need to take a step up to win here and, and then to compete in Rio against the Japanese. Yeah. Do you still think he needs to take another step up from, from time? Oh, yeah, we've got to get the time down. And I don't think tonight's time is representative of what he can do tonight. I think he was wound tight as a drum when he walked out there. <laughs> so the t 4095 is great, got the job done, but I know he's got a couple or more seconds in him in the next month. And that's what it's going to take if you want to win a medal. Bob and Chase, congratulations again. Um, Bob, what, what do you think are the reasons why Chase didn't achieve best time here while uh, making the Olympic team is the ultimate goal. Well, I think Chase swam to win the race, and in doing so, he he probably he, I met, we hammered into his head he had to be conservative the first 200. He could not go out too hard, and by doing that, that might have cost him a second or so. But I don't care because we knew he needed to come home really strong, and in this circumstance, is exactly what he should have done. And I honestly think that you know. He's always really good on the second shave. So when we come back and do a training camp and do some more work, um, he's going to benefit a ton from that. And I'm really confident he'll go a lot faster. Yeah. Chase, can you talk about your transformation over the past four years and what the last trials was like versus uh, how you started tonight? Um, last trials, I, I knew I really didn't have a, a chance of making the team, and it was all about experience. I, at that point, I never really be, have been to like a, a meet that level or, or really a nationals over 500 people in the stands. Right. And um, I think me being able to make two finals there, and that was our whole goal all along in 2012, exactly. was, was to make a final, and I ended up making two and, and going beyond that. And um, I think that really helped me in, in 2013 when I went to Barcelona and I I wasn't shocked when I walked out of, out of uh, the ready room and seeing everyone in the stands and cheering. So um, everything before that was all preparation. And, and in 2000, right after 2012 Olympics, Bob sat down with me in, in Starbucks, and, and that was our plan. It was we were going to sneak on the national team and start making some trips in 13 and, and uh, build and progress forward to um, setting myself up to making the team in 16. And uh, hopefully setting myself up with his chance to win a medal. David. Chase, I'm curious. M Michael said he gave you a prediction about what it's going to take to win the, the 400 IM. Where are you thinking and w what do you think you can do in that race, you know, come Rio, and, and how are you going to prepare for it differently? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say any times. Um, I know that I need to be faster than I was tonight, and I, I think I'm very capable of it. I mean, even looking at my lactate, it wasn't even that high, and I don't even feel like – I. I don't even feel like that tired after the race. Um, and I, I think it was, I was just so nervous. And, and this was the one thing for my entire life. And I, I never really thought past like standing on the Olympic podium winning a medal. Um, obviously, it's been in my mind for the past few years. But for, since I can remember, I just wanted to be on the Olympic team. I wanted to be US Olympian. And that was in the back of my mind the whole time. And I, I tried to swim to win and, and get on the team. So I'm happy with tonight. And I think there's a lot more in the tank. 
Absolutely, oh, yeah. yeah. I, th I think I'd, I'd do well in those situations where I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to lay it on the line, and, and I've been in those situations before at, at World Championships. I know it's a completely different atmosphere there, but um, I think for me, I'm going to go on with the same mindset, and I, I know I, I did all the work this year. I've never trained like this ever in my entire life, and I know I, I, know I got a little more. Yeah. Couple in all more. fairness, I think the pressure tonight was on Chase. Of anybody in that heat, he had the most pressure because there have been some expectations, right, and he'd done well. You know, so that's the hardest race of his life. Over. The rest will be fun. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to it. Go ahead, Jeff. Me too. Chase, uh, I know you guys had talked about doing this quite a while ago, but to, the things you actually had to give up this year, school and, and other things, can you just talk about that and what this now means to you as the culmination of that? Um, well, the first, the first part of it is I knew that regardless of the outcome that I wanted to put 100% effort into it. I, I didn't miss a single workout all year. I, when I had to make a correction, whether it was hard or not on me and me and Bob got into an argument, uh, we made that, we made that fix. And, um, I, I wanted to look back after this race, like I'm thinking right now that I did 100% the best, and I, I set myself up for the best opportunity to make the team. And I can, if, if it didn't turn out the way it did tonight, I, I would be fine with it. I wanted to tell myself I put my best foot forward and I gave 100% effort to prepare myself. And for me to do that, I had to take a year off from school. Um, I certainly miss all my friends and my family. And um, I know it wasn't easy on any, uh, my girlfriend at Georgia. And I know she can't wait to have me back. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hope. Um, <laughs> and um, I know my family's been awesome, and they've supported me 100% of the way, whether I was going to stay at Georgia or I was going to come here. And, and I can't thank Jack enough. Um, yeah. Jack's been unbelievable for me, and I've progressed so much for Jack, and he's, he's been one of the biggest role models in my swimming career, and he's been pivotal to, to where I am now. And... Um, I want to thank him for all of he's done for me and, and allowing me. And I had my t conversation with him, and he told me I need to get out of a college town and start in focus. And, and I think that was the best call, and he knew it was best for me. And he supported me 100% of the way, even though I wasn't representing Georgia. And, and I love him to death for that. Um, in Rio, you'll be going up. up uh, you, sorry, you'll be going up against uh, Seto and Hagino. And uh, what kind of race do you think it's going to be like? And also, how confident are you to be on top of them? Um, I mean, they're they're unbelievable, and, and those two have uh, those two have been the best for the past few years. And if I if I want to, um, I got to be competitive with those guys. And I know I've got a lot of things I need to work on. And um, but obviously. Those are the two guys I'm shooting for, and, um, and it's, it's, they're going to be tough to beat. They've, they've swum well all year. Um, Hagino's done awesome, and um, he's posted some good times, and Sato's done the same. And he's, he's proved, they both have proven themselves on the international stage. So it's not going to be an easy task, but um, I'm, I'm just looking forward to getting on the team and, and start preparing. Karen and then John. You said you love swimming the same events as Michael. If you had grown up on the West Coast instead of the East Coast, do you think you still would have gravitated to the same events, or do you think you would have been doing different events? Um, I think the, the 4 a.m. is an event that you usually choose, and it usually chooses you, and, yeah. and it also, Bob also helped it choose me. <laughs> um, it's kind of our club thing. Yeah, that's, that's the way uh, we train everything. I am base training, and I, I don't think I would be as good of, as an I am or as I am now doing the workload that I did when I was younger. We we did some long, miserable workouts that I was not a fan of Bob in the mornings at 7 a.m. when he would throw me in the distance lane by myself. And everyone else is just doing an hour of power. And um, But I again, it's it's the 4 a.m. is just kind of something that comes to you. And I'm, I'm lucky to be versatile in multiple strokes and have a strong breaststroke. But... Uh, I think me going back, me doing butterfly is a testament to me wanting to swim the same events as Michael. I, I wasn't, butterfly didn't come natural to me. I was a breaststroker and, and never was a backstroker. I'll, I'll note that. But um, 
Butterfly was, it was something I had to work at and I got, I was just loved racing next to Michael and I did that enough that I ultimately, I would say the Butterfly, 200 Butterfly is probably my second best event. So I think me just wanting to emulate, emulating Michael so much is why my two fly is the way it is. Yeah, I would, I would probably hey, say that. Probably, and and yeah. without Bob, I probably wouldn't even be doing the 4 a.m. because I probably wouldn't want to be doing it. <laughs> but right. Bob, Bob's good at, at pushing you and, and getting the best out of you. And, and honestly, it's the best thing for me. And, and I, love, I love the challenge every single day. Okay. Yeah. Last question to John and then Wayne. Did either one of you know Ryan was hurt or, or did you sense during the race that he didn't look right? No. I mean, I, I didn't know. Yeah, I, I mean, we kind of we just, just kind of we, swam. Yeah, he swam. We just got. I walked in the ready room and I tried to keep my focus on myself, and that's all I could do. Can't control what anyone else is doing. Similarly, I want to ask you, Bob. I know it was a um, controversial decision to put Michael in the 400 IM four years ago. Yeah. Ryan's still the oldest gold medalist in that event from four years ago. Right. Is that an event that you think you know someone in their 30s, um, perhaps you know? can't do anymore or shouldn't do? Well, I think it's tough because of what you have to do in training. And I, I'm sure somebody in their 30s could do it if they could get the motivation to do the training. But that's tough. Because you got to think somebody like Ryan or Michael, they've been doing this for 20 years and probably at a super high level for 15 years. And there's only so long you can sustain that kind of work. You know, Chase is probably five years into it, right? Maybe yeah. a little more. Yeah. But, you know, he's got a, a, the window still there that he's motivated and can come in and put those yards and meters in. And I, I think it's tough when you're older. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, guys. Congrats. Thank you. We should have Connor Yeager here in about five minutes.